Welcome. Good morning. Happy President's Day. Welcome to Rick Helps Real Estate News and Market. Uh, good morning, Jackie. And good morning, Terry. He says, financial markets out of control. Harry Dent, economists predicting houses will eventually fall to 2012 prices. Yeah, that Harry Dent, he's been on a long time predicting that everything's going to go to hell in the handbasket. So I take it with a grain of salt, Terry. I'll just wait and see. 2012. He's predicting the dollar to, a cl to collapse, gold to go up like crazy. So I don't know. Uh, but I can tell you that um, the market right now is kind of like that movie Princess Bride where uh, Billy Crystal says he's not dead yet. He's mostly dead. And uh, we are slow, but there's some resilience out there that's surprising me. Um, we're knocking on 7%'s door right now. We're at 6.8. And Betis says the sky is falling. Yes, I can see it. Um, <laughs> it was last week. It was cold here. Um, <clears throat> I can see some resilience and I want to show it in these numbers here on my seven day moving average. Cause I'm as, as we get closer to 7%, we're at 6.8 now. Now the markets are closed today. So I don't know if we're going to go up or down, see what tomorrow brings. But, um, I was expecting a slowdown in new contracts and I'm not seeing it. Sean says 70% of the people have 2% rates, no inventory. A lot of, man, so I think the actual number, Sean, is 64%, but why split hairs? But you're right. But look at this. Um, new listings kind of went up slightly. That's just a short little bump. But, I mean, they really started climbing down in, in uh, January and February. But then look at new contracts. They're up. They were coming down, but they're up this week. Um, why are they up? Rates went up. Well, the gap between new listings and new contracts, if I look at it from a percentage basis, and it doesn't mean that 92% of these actual new listings sold, it just means that, you know, we had, you know, 3,465 new listings and 3,184 new contracts, and that's 93%. Let's just start with that. Well, if we go back to where houses were, prices were starting to really fall off the face of the earth, that percentage was 53%. I think that's a pretty close barometer as to what's what's going on. So we're as long as we're hanging in the 90s here, as long as that gap between new listings and contracts is tight, then the market seems to be hanging on uh, quite well. In fact, even the Cromford people said, um, with interest rates noticeably higher than in January, there is less enthusiasm in the air from buyers. That's true. There are only 1,822 new contracts except last week, noticeably lower than the previous two weeks, which are around the 2,000 mark. Not according to today on my seven-day moving average. So be interesting to see what they say next. On the other hand, sellers have turned down the rate of new listings arriving, and we did see that. So demand and supply are both weakening from the same interest rate movement. The result is that we see the market balance moving in favor of a seller which will help support pricing, not going to make pricing go up. The volume of transactions will not rise as quickly as it would if rates had stayed low as they were in January. We're still seeing increased closed transaction rates, as you would expect for this time of year. The listing success rate has also recovered and now stands over 70%, consistent with the healthy market. So they finish here by saying, basically, the correction in pricing has run its course, and we're now back in a normal market far less frantic frantic than what we experienced in 2020 and 2022. So it's kind of like, well, things are kind of slow, um, but they aren't drastic. And Do Vegas here says people in Phoenix must be rich because some are giving away houses to cheap. You know, um, put an offer on a house. We didn't want to bid too high because we knew the house needed a lot of work. We knew that, uh, we just knew that the seller was not going to fix anything. It's an unusual situation. And uh, there were three offers on the house and 20 more people that wanted to look at it. And it was priced at $500,000. Um, where, where are these coming from? Um, so, and uh, um, interest sellers and buyers are chasing rates to list and buy. It's a really odd market, Sean. With the local and affordable factor, who buying the homes? Are they out of state? No, they're, a lot of them are local. Um, a lot of them are just people that have been renting for a long time and just want to jump in now because there aren't bidding wars. At least we thought there weren't bidding wars. 
Marty's mom. I thought I read 90% now have mortgages of 4% or less. Many won't sell. Well, we can see that. And uh, we can see that uh, that the listings have not gone up. Um, they've stayed put and they've actually gone down. If I can look at our average listings here on the Cromford index, you can see they've gone down. Now, <clears throat> they went down here. That's That's not a red pencil. Here we go. They went down here. Wow, what did I do to that? And they went down here. So <laughs> I did something goofy with that thing. So um, there we are, back to normal. So we are trending down, which we evidently do in uh, since 2020. Now in 2019, let's see what this brings us. We went up. 2018, we, where is 2018? Over here. We kind of flatlined. So we're... We're not growing, that's for sure. And uh, so I think that uh, it's going to be tied out there for a while, assuming an existing FHA and VA loan is looking better and better. Lots of great sub opportunities out there. Investor purchase for Phoenix is down 67%. If the investor market is what helped inflate, the pullback will have the same effect in reverse. Well, it might. Or there's such a large pool of people that have been beat up by investors the past two years. They're viewing this as an opportunity to get in. That's what I'm seeing in the buyer traffic, seeing people that said, I didn't want to compete with the investors last year. Now I don't have to. So um, it's really hard to say if we're going to see prices just tank. Now we're looking here at average list price per square foot. And this, this uh, says here is week six and we are, so we're starting week seven. Now it'll be interesting to see how this is, but it's not, uh, it's going up and uh, that's unusual to me. And I think the rate increase will bring the list price down. And as I've said before, the list price, a lot of what's built in there is the assumption that they're going to have to give you some help on closing costs. Now let's talk about list price for a moment. Cause if you're jumping into the market, um, as much as I hate to say it, you're just not going to get people to come way down on their asking price. If you see something for 500,000, they're not going to give it to you for 425. They're not going to give it to you for 450. They're getting lots of views and uh, and enough attention. Um, and the average time on the market is a little over 40 days. So if it's still on the market for a couple of weeks, that's not dire. But it all depends on how much traffic they've had. Um, and it's going to be um, not the bargain basement buying season that you've kind of been hoping for. We need desperation for that to happen. And we're not seeing desperation right now and miguel here says many sellers are selling because they bought 2010 and 13 they'd rather take the cash now seeing a bunch of that i've seen more people selling out of necessity job transfer they gotta move uh they're moving to get close to the grandkids stuff like that if this side of the market is at seven percent rates gonna be gangbusters when they hit four i'm not hoping that we hit four anytime soon sean because i don't want to see that come back um not yet that's just seller greed. Once people realize they can sell, prices will be forced to drop in time. It's not seller greed. I never agree on the term seller greed. Um, you know, sellers are, you're always going to try and ask the top price. I don't care if you're selling a car, this bottle of water, or your house, and the buyers determine the price. In other words, the house we were looking at, they were asking 500000 There were people that were asking, offering more. So who... Who set the price? Did the sellers decide when you walk in the door, they're going to raise it by 15K? No, the buyers did. So the buyer demand sets the price. And uh, so um, don't worry. I don't. I knew you meant can't. <laughs> but I appreciate your comment. I really do. I just think that, uh, um, you know, we're really quick to, to blame everything on sellers as a group. And look, you're just going to say, you're going to sit down with the agent and go, what do you think my house is worth? And the agent goes, well, based on what's sold, I see this, this, and this. What do you think? You come to a meeting of the minds and go, okay, well, let's try that. And you try that and it either works or it doesn't work. And I mean, you're not going to say, well, let's discount it $100,000 for the greater good. You're just not going to do it. Miguel is just true. Let him sit around for 100 days, then lowball offer. Exactly. Buyer set the price. 100 days won't get you a lowball offer. 100 days will get you something off the list price, but the lowball offers... Um, they're not being looked at except the, the 
what's happening with low ball offers is people are looking at open door and open door has, they started out too high. So I showed one last night in a video that I walked through and, and I didn't say on the video it was open door, but it was, it's been on the market 140 days and they did a terrible job uh, remodeling this thing on the inside. I even showed that they painted everything, but they left the old dingy outlet covers on it. And uh, so, um, you know, um, it, it's been sitting there forever. Everything about it, I didn't like. I didn't like the uh, the entrance to the pool. You had to go to the side yard, walk around, go through a gate. There was really no direct entrance to the pool. But my point is, they started out too hot. They paid five sixty five for this thing, and now I think they're trying to sell it for four forty. So when you see that they marked it that high, and now they're trying to sell it at four forty, it kind of makes you think that you can do that with the rest of the market. Well, the rest of the market is just people trying to sell their current home, whereas Open Door is trying to dump some of their, their inventory. And Marty here says, uh, I don't see rates going below five. What do you think? I don't either. I really don't. Um, I think we have too much debt um, right now, and, and inflation I don't see going away anytime soon. Um, you know, the central bank is clamping down, but... Um, can you convince me that the treasury is? They're not. So I think that uh, as long as that spending continues at that level, we're going to see inflation. You can't spend $1.4 trillion and go, ah, that won't show up in the market. Jackie says, I watched a special with Barry this week, and I'm worried what will happen when we hit fives again, which I do believe is coming back. I don't want to see the frenzy again. I don't either. And thank you, Jackie, for hitting the like button. Uh, I don't want to see it. Here's our listing success rate. Um, this is weird where it went from 59% to 67% in one week. Uh, but now it's starting to tick down just a little bit. It's at 68.8%. Uh, That's pretty uh, respectable. Um, and then uh, um, I'm going to continue to watch on the seven-day moving average. As I expect, I expect contracts to decrease. But uh, I've been wrong more times than I've been right. <laughs> So if selling else today's market, how do you go about selling a setting a list price of the market's conditions? Well, um, in January, you really, I mean, you can go back and you can look at past sales and you can say, okay, I mean, this one sold for 550, this one sold for 525, and you can you can kind of get a range. And that's what you have to deal with is the range of your house. You're you're not going to be able to pick the price. Um, if you price it too low right now, people are competing and bidding it up. Um, if you price it too high, they blatantly ignore you. Uh, there are people that if you're priced too high, uh, will come in and, and hit you really low. But one of the important things that I advise sellers right now is when you price, I want you to understand as a rule, uh, the buyers are not going to offer you your listing price. Now there are surprises out there like Gilbert and Chandler. They're pretty healthy. And so they're getting, a lot of them, their asking price. Uh, you get up Phoenix uh, areas out in the way out in the West Valley, down in Maricopa, you're not going to get your list price. So, getting back to, let's say you got a three month average and you're looking and you got a house that's comparable to yours and it sold for five hundred thousand, you kind of have to look and say, well, where's today's market? Well, if it's declining, um, I'm not going to get five. I know that. So why don't I price it at four ninety five and don't price it at four ninety nine nine ninety nine. 999 because people search in brackets between 450 and 500 500 to 550 so if you price at 499 999 because of one dollar you miss that person that was searching for a five hundred thousand dollar home now i'm starting to look like greg Hag here 72 sold um so i would find that range and say okay let's start here but then have a strategy with your agent in other words what is our pricing strategy if I price at 495 and I don't get any intention after 10 days, how much farther should I go down? Because some people put out a list price and they're stuck to it like glue. They're married to it. That's my price. I saw one that was, I can't even remember the price, but it has been at that exact price for 160 days. At what point are you going to wake up? Nobody wants to pay you that price. I'm sure they've had some offers come in. But what are you waiting for? It's you've been on the market. I would see take it off the market. Give your realtor a break. <laughs> it's, 
Richard says, uh, that's the investor fire sale, which will force other homes to be lowered uh, to compete with that investor file sale. So it's going to start happening in a couple months. Well, we'll see. If they're still getting a return on their rent, uh, there may not be a fire sale. Um, so, um, you know, Sean says, you're wishing. <laughs> you know, everybody's speculating here now. It's That's what kind of makes real estate fun in a way. In my case, I sold and have cash ready to buy. I love 700% rates. I'd like to email you many examples of sales in the past six months that are comps moving forward. Yeah, please do. Um, he could never be Greg Hague. Yeah, let's hope not. I don't want to beat him up. He's very successful. But uh, um, so I think, you know, going back to, to the listing prices, you know, as long as you're not stuck on that price, because people get emotionally stuck. It's my house. It's 500000 I don't care what anybody thinks. Um, I'm not budging. That's the house we saw this la last week. I mean, she literally, the, the homeowner was home when we were looking at the home and she told my buyers, you might want to think about getting a new roof. <laughs> really? She said that? <laughs> and the house was priced at $500,100. I asked the agent, I go, how'd you come up with that price? Well, that's what she wanted. Well, that's a red flag to me. That tells me that she has a price and she's sticking to it. And she did. She wouldn't budge. And uh, she had an offer that came in where they were asking for concessions for closing costs. She said no. And uh, but she made the right play. She got an offer. My prediction is it's going to fall out during the inspection process because I don't think she's going to fix anything. Uh, that's just nice lady, though. But uh, boy, she had her dog in her arms and body language, arms are folded. I thought this is going nowhere. <laughs> so it's an interesting one. I'm going to go check out. I'm going to take my GoPro down today. I'm going to. I'm going to film one of those rent-to-own neighborhoods. Uh, Sean, you may have seen it. It's in Gilbert, uh, just north of the downtown area there off of Gilbert Road. It's a huge development, rent-to-own. Uh, it's not finished yet, so I'm going to go take a peek at that. Um, got a funny story here for you, kind of a frustrating one. I'm Believe it or not, uh, I've got a class reunion this summer way up in Washington State. And uh, I don't know how I got roped into it years ago, but I'm the one that's putting it together. and. Uh, Basically, I just built the website and I do the marketing and rally everybody and say, okay, come on, and build the the Google file. Oh, well, let me get Michael here first before I tell you that. I hear lots of buzz about May inflation rate compared to last year. That's the base effect. I would think that MBS and Treasury traders would have priced it in at this point. Um, Michael, they were trying to price it in, and that's why they were pushing back, and that's why they were down in the 5.7 range. They tried to price it in, but then the CPI came out and kind of dashed their their hopes. So I think that's uh, that's going to happen. Um, so love the feet on the street footage. Yeah, it's not boots on the ground. It's feet on the street. I'm going to show you my dingy tennis shoes, maybe. First impressions go a long way. Have your house looking good before you sell. Yeah, that makes a, that makes a big difference. I mean, if you saw the video I put out last night, I mean, everything about it, even the trim between the tile and the kitchen's all torn up and because it's been vacant for so long um it stunk as soon as you walked in whoop boy and uh uh here are more and more realtors make comments about eye buyer homes as if they're toxic my own realtor went out of his way to steer me away from open door house i inquired about you know there's some that are good um and there's some that aren't like the one i went to yesterday is pretty bad they're all over the board some of them, they will negotiate with you very aggressively. And some of them, they'll just tell you, um, no, Rick, we're still far apart. Thank you for the offer. They're really easy to work with. Um, I actually like um, purchasing from Open Door because of the ease of how I can communicate with them. And they always get back to you in a timely fashion. And they're very polite. Uh, there's no attitude. You know, you don't have an agent on the other side with Open Door. You just have somebody that answers your emails that says, well, I will present you offer to the seller, which I kind of chuckle. There isn't a seller. There's a group of investors that makes a decision based on a spreadsheet. Uh, but I found the whole process to be very pleasant. I think I've, I did uh, sold two of them last year. Uh, Trade-wise, I already don't trust realtors because they're in panic mode and everything to lose if prices go down. That's not true. And I'll tell you why. But now they're attacking discounted iBuyer homes. It reeks of desperation. No, we're saying that the iBuyers bought too high. And we saw that and we showed that and it shows on their bottom line. They lost $600 million. That's not realtors desperation. Look, if prices go down, that doesn't affect me. That doesn't affect my job. It doesn't affect my income. 
you know, the higher priced homes, we get maybe a higher commission. Yes and no. If you did notice when the market was going up like crazy, the commissions offered were discounted. So the truth is we were making less money per house than we were before the market got hot. I know people like to beat up realtors and I get it. I get a little bit defensive, but, uh, you know, um, it's, uh, oh, what's the championship ring for? Uh, this thing, I worked for Oro Eat Bread. This thing's been stuck on my finger for so many years. Um, believe me, it's not football. I'd have been crushed like an ant. Uh, I got this 1989 for uh, having a good year. And uh, if you have two years in a row, you get a diamond. There's no diamond in there. <laughs> so, hey, Commander Curtis, welcome. Open door in Tucson at least has a cooper cooperation offer of 2% for buyer's agent. wonder if that, that has anything to do with it. Um, up here, I think they're paying anywhere from two to three. Uh, look, if a client wants to look at an open door home and we decline not to do that, um, then we're in big doo-doo because uh, we're not supposed to negotiate negotiate commissions at all um it is what it is and uh jackie says right agent for life not the transaction um so they um and and i don't want trade wise i didn't mean to beat you up but uh, um i think you know open door the reason we're looking at it is it's really going to be one for the books at the harvard business school you how did these people buy these homes when the market was hot as hell and still lose money and now they're trying to buy them and sell them at a time when homes are going down. How are they going to make money? So we're all watching it out of curiosity. It's kind of like that car accident on the freeway where you slow down. So we're really wondering what this is going to be. So um, uh, thank you. Just a logical trader. No more. Yeah, I like to tell people it's just math. Um, so uh, over 50 watching. Oh, that's great. Yeah, we're doing pretty good this morning. Um, yeah, trade-wise, I agree with that. It's just math um, when you're a logical trader. Real estate, though, shouldn't is only trading if you're investing. You don't want to take a trader attitude if you're looking for your house to move into to raise your family. And I think we have a lot of that going on. So I'm going to jump this real quick because this is a, it was a very frustrating weekend for me. So I built this site. Here's my 50-year reunion, right? I had a class member say, I can't see where to pay. And I just kind of got a screenshot that said here <laughs> seriously <laughs> i can't see where to pay <laughs> have you ever scrolled down with your mouse i, I don't know she goes well, i'm not very techie I, again just scroll down <laughs> i had another classmate on, on facebook i have a facebook group for the class and uh and, and she goes what am I missing? What website? Now I have the website pinned to the top of the group. And then the thread that she was talking about, the website was mentioned twice. And she goes, what am I missing? What website? I, I good friend of mine. I wasn't even going to answer her. I just like, just dig around. You'll find it. <laughs> uh, hey, I don't know how to get on your website. Okay. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. And then put out the thing. <laughs> so, so I, uh, I don't consider myself a techie guy. But when I look at what some of the other people are doing in my class, I guess I am. <laughs> so it's going to be fun. It's going to be. Uh, that's why I'm leaving town around the first part of May. I'm going up for May 20th and see what uh, and uh, see. And I picked May because it's not expensive up there, so we can go up there and have a a good old time. And hopefully the weather will cooperate. I am going to Mexico on Saturday. I'm going to spend a week in Rocky Point. I've got some friends uh, down there. I'm going to spend a week down there. And I'm going to do a video on Arizona's beach. That's what we call Rocky Point, Arizona's beach. So I'm going to film everything. I'm going to show you some of the segments driving into Mexico just before you get there. And I'm going to show what it's like when you cross the border. I'm always like sweating bullets and biting my nails. And I don't know why. And uh, so, uh, so <laughs> a mature gentleman, well, like my son says, and my dad's in his 70s. <laughs> Thanks, Tyler. Um, so I'm going to film the whole thing, and then I'm going to show you what Rocky Point's all about. I'm going to be staying at a place called uh, The Reef right on the beach. And But I like going downtown, and they get, they've get they got some great 
seafood. So we go down there and get the shrimp and get the scallops and head back and cook an epic meal. And so it's going to be a lot of fun. But I think a lot of people don't, you know, there's a lot of watch outs when you go down there. In other words, as soon as you go through the border, if it says 20 kilometers is the speed limit, do not go 21. You'll get a ticket. So, and only carry $40 in your wallet because that's how much you're going to pay them. You're going to say, well, I only have $40. Can I pay you now? And the history of that is they say that they're saving you a trip to the courthouse. Well, sure they are. But um, but you're going to drive through that town. I'm going to keep the GoPro going on that. We'll see what happens. Um, so Forks is not a techie place. I, Terry, I only lived in Forks for two years. <laughs> we didn't have internet when I lived there. I wish we could have. <laughs> but uh, um, Forks, for those that don't know, I lived out there when I was 22 years old. Only had a population of 3,000 people. I worked in a grocery store. I had a 19-inch black and white TV. And uh, and uh, for as a hobby, I worked at the radio station spinning records that was across the alley from me. So it was kind of fun. Played in a band. And, uh, um, and we were terrible. We didn't have enough songs to do three sets. Uh, keep up the great work here in San Diego. Good neighborhood and clean property. Still multiple offers. I love San Diego. Uh, Tyler. Jack, yes, me too. It's been... I'd be 54 in a few months. You're just a kid, Tyler. So love San Diego. But um, so I'm going to check back tomorrow. I'm really curious to see what's going to go on when the markets open tomorrow. Where do you think rates are headed? Let me know in the comments section. And uh, they're at 6.80 today. Is the bond market still going to be nervous? And uh, uh, they're going to tick it up again. Miguel's giving me some advice here. Cool. It'll show many it's not dangerous down there like people think. $40, give them $20. It's more than enough. And they'll escort you out if you want. Super. I've always been, always heard it was uh, $40. i have got a $20 hanging in my wallet now, Miguel. I'm not going to test it. There's something about driving down there and seeing a Jeep go by with six people in it with M15s. <laughs> it's kind of intimidating. But Rocky Point's a lot of fun. Uh, if you haven't been there, I uh, hope you enjoy the video. I'm going to show you the, the fun stuff about it. There's a lot of interesting. Do you know there's a guy down there that dresses up like Batman and drives around the city and his wife is a prominent real estate agent? I'm going to try and show you his house. <laughs> Why would you dress up like Batman? Well, that's what he does. Anybody, everybody have a great Monday and a great beginning to a week. Take care.